so I hope that I'm not gonna be redundant or anything like that, but I'm just gonna sort of go through um, how I avoid cracks, and it's pretty much through compression, because like I assume you have a chunk of clay, something like this, that you've wedged to a fairly pliable consistency, and that you're just rolling at a coil. But the thing is, when you roll out a coil, the simplest way to explain it is like there's all these like little particles in clay that hold together and they hold the structure. Um, which is why like if you warp something um, on the wheel and then you fire it, it has a memory and it'll sort of re shape itself like it happens all the time with me to like the rims of my cups where like be like oh it's gonna be fine like I'm just gonna push it back to how it was and then it's not fine um that's just all the particles like not realigning themselves to each other they've gotten off kilter and then when they fire they go back to that all like all off kilterness more or less so I assume, and I just I want to say it just in case I'm um, assuming wrong, after you make your snake, that you're taking the time to really compress it. So if not, I would take this time to sort of just go back and forth with your clay to make sure that it's getting nice and compressed. So when people pull handles, um, they're basically doing that because they're making a back and forth motion, which takes those clay particles and realign them to each other again. Um, after you have your handle, I imagine you cut off however big you want it at this point. I might tap this to be just a little bit bigger if I were you than you want it. And this is really fast, so it's not gonna be the perfect shape. And then of course, scoring and slipping, all of the tedious kinds of things. Um, I just wanted to talk about that for a second because I saw you had this gnarly crack right here in one of your cups and that was probably just a compression issue again. So like when, you then take your handle and you attach it to your cup. All of those clay particles, again, are kind of being pulled apart a little bit. And if you don't compress them back together, they could crack. And so I wouldn't do it right exactly now, but when it's just a little bit, um, less pliable, I would take the time to compress that um, either with your finger or your thumb or like a red rubber rib, something like that, where you can just really make that compression happen, like compress it really well. Um, then what I would do is I don't know exactly how you're attaching, but if it's something like this, What you need to do again is really compress that connection to the clay. So the tools that I use, so I start obviously with my finger and I'm not gonna do the whole thing around, but then I use a combination of a rib, something maybe like this tool, depending on the shape that I want in between my handle, or one of these rubbery tools. This one has two different points. You can get them bigger or smaller like this. And what you can do is you can get up into those areas with these tools. I like this one because it's a little bit firmer. And you can really compress the clay in, alternating between these and probably a paintbrush. You can just compress and compress. Like I saw you had like this nice little section in here where it went down. I would use this to 
compress and compress and compress. And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start by molding out the shape that I want, maybe fixing it a bit with a paintbrush or a sponge or whatever I'm going to use. And this isn't the type of handle I make, so it's a little bit sloppy. Um, but after it's hardened a little bit, so it's not quite leather, um, it's still a little bit workable, um, but not 100%. I would go in again with this tool here or the sculpture tool and I would push down again and just compress, adding clay if I needed to. But I would just do this and compress and compress and compress. And that should, it's tedious, it really is, but that should help with your cracking issues. You're also saying it took, like that you're putting your stuff in the wet boxes forever. And honestly, like what I do, I have a full-time job too that isn't pottery. And so I'll put my forms in the wet box to get them even. Um, once they're at the right consistency, I'll add my handle, put them in the wet box overnight again. And then the next day when they're like, again, just almost leather, like they don't really, they move just a little bit, but not all that much. Um, that's when I would come in and do that second round of compressing and cleaning up. And then after that, you should be able to honestly cover up your mugs on a wear board upside down like this, um, loosely covered with plastic until they dry. And then I usually turn my handles inward since they're gonna dry first. Um, and you shouldn't really see a lot of cracking. I don't know the science behind it, but I have found if I leave things in my wet box for too long, I have more issues with warping and cracking than if I let them dry a little bit more naturally. Um, so I don't know, I hope that helps. I don't know if it's just a whole bunch of information that you've already had before, but hopefully that's helped a bit. Um, one thing you can do too is if you're finding a lot of cracks in that area is maybe take a little bit of clay and score and slip and you can reinforce that area with a little coil of clay and then compress that in and it makes a little bit of a stronger connection. But again, the main idea is that you compress and you compress and you compress. Um, same with the bottoms, if you're noticing you're getting a lot of cracks, especially S cracks in the bottoms, like little snakes, this tool is a godsend and you just want to, I spend so much time compressing, not only when I throw, so I spend about probably 15, 20 seconds compressing while I throw, but then afterwards I just compress and I compress forever. Um, if I'm trimming, I do the same thing but I use just my finger and I go back and forth and back and forth and that should really help with any cracks that you're getting on your bottom. So good luck. I hope, I hope that was a little bit helpful. It was really long. Sorry.